受賞者の皆様のご入場でございます。皆様ご着席ください。Could you please take your seat? Taka Mado no Miyahi, Hisako Den Ka no Go New Jo de Gozaimas. Minasama, Go Kiris O Nega Ita Shimas. ご着席ください
ただいまより第三十回京都賞受賞式を開始いたします。初めに主催者を代表いたしまして、稲森さんが会長、井村ひろおよりご挨拶をいたします。稲森さんが会長、井村ひろおよりご挨拶をいたします。本日ここに Today, we are deeply honored to extend a special welcome to Her Imperial Highness Princess Takamado, Honorary President of the Inamori Foundation. The Inamori Foundation is also greatly pleased and honored by the presence of the ambassadors and consul general from many countries and of our many distinguished guests at this solemn and spectacular 2014 Kyoto Prize presentation ceremony. Let us congratulate Dr. Robert Samuel Langer, Dr. Edward Whitten, and Ms. Fukumi Shimura on their receiving the 2014 Kyoto Prize. We would like to commend them for their great achievement and extend the heartfelt congratulations on behalf of the Inamori Foundation. Inamori Foundation was established in 1984 by Dr. Kazuo Inamori, president of the foundation and the founder of Kyocera Corporation. The foundation held the first Kyoto Prize presentation in the following year and has awarded the prize to individuals and the groups who have made outstanding contribution to the betterment of human life through great achievement in the three categories of advanced technology, basic sciences, and arts and philosophy. This year, both the Inamori Foundation and the Kyoto Prize commemorate the 30th anniversary. When the Kyoto Prize was created, Dr. Kazuo Inamori outlined what he hoped to achieve in a short article titled Philosophy of the Kyoto Prize. In it, he wrote of his desire to give something back to the global community that had sustained and nurtured him for so many years, and to give shape to his lifelong belief that a human being has no higher calling than to strive for the greater good of humanity and the world. The Kyoto Prize was established based on his conviction that the future of humanity can be assured only through a balance of scientific progress and spiritual depth. For 30 years since its inception, we at the Idamori Foundation have awarded the Kyoto Prize in keeping with these tenets. Thanks to our official Kyoto Prize nominators from around the world who have nominated candidates, and with the help of academic authorities and the experts in Japan who have shared our philosophy and made sincere efforts in the selection process, the Kyoto Prize has been awarded to full, truly outstanding researchers and artists, 19 individuals, and one group have visited Kyoto as a Kyoto Prize laureates. Our laureates are all intellectuals of the highest order, whose achievements have all had a profound and revolutionary impact not only on fields of knowledge and ideas, but also on the very future of humanity. The sheer commitment of these individuals to their work and the passion, one has to call it love, with which they regard humankind, the sincerity that emanates from them as human beings have moved and impressed us deeply. The hope Kazu Inamori expressed 30 years ago about the need to attain a balance between scientific progress and spiritual depth 
are now widely known thanks to the many outstanding individuals who have received the Kyoto Prize and their achievements. However, our work is not over yet. The Inamori Foundation is committed through this prize to continuing to enable progress both in science and in the human spirit in the hope that in so doing, we may contribute to the future peace and the prosperity of the world. In closing, we would like to once again, express our deepest appreciation to the many professors and experts who have, over the course of the 30 years, helped us select truly outstanding Kyoto Prize laureate fairly and impartially, to the Japanese government who have supported us for so many years, to Kyoto Prefecture, Kyoto City, and their citizens, and lastly, to our many supporters many of whom are sitting here in the audience today for your continued support and cooperation. With this, I would like to conclude my opening remark. Thank you very much. This was opening remark by Dr. Hiroo Ibura, Chairman of Inamori Foundation. Here, we would like to ask for felicitations from Honorary President of Inamori Foundation, Her Imperial Highness Princess Takamado. I am delighted to be here with all of you today again this year to celebrate the 2014 Kyoto Prize presentation ceremony which is conducted in such a splendid manner. Let me extend my heartfelt congratulations to this year's laureate Dr. Robert Samuel Langer in Advanced Technology, Dr. Edward Witten in Basic Science, and Ms. Fukumi Shimura in Arts and Philosophy, congratulations indeed. All three laureates have been working strenuously hard for so many years to elevating science and arts, which contributed certainly to making our society warm and merry for us and they have endeavored the attempts to give dreams and peace to all of the people. For those great achievements, I sincerely pay a great respect. Kyoto Prize was founded by President Inamori with this idea to strive for greater good for people and the world. It was launched to recognize dedicated people with outstanding achievements contributing to the progress of science, human civilization, and deepening spiritual aspects ennobling mind. Fortunate to say, inside and outside Japan, Kyoto Prize has steadily gained higher reputation by now and has become one of the renowned international award. I truly hope that laureates will be further active in their own field for betterment and happiness of all. And I have a strong wish that Kyoto Prize will continue to recognize and commend human wisdom for the purpose of progress of mankind and peace of the world. That is my remarks at the 2014 Kyoto Prize. That was felicitations for Imperial Highness Princess Takamado kindly gave us her words.
Prior to the presentation of the prizes, we called upon Dr. Shigetada Nakarishi, Chairman of the Kyoto Prize Executive Committee, for the introduction. On behalf of the Kyoto Prize Executive Committee, I would like to report on the selection of the 2014 Kyoto Prize Lollies. The 2014 Kyoto Prize in Advanced Technology is awarded to Dr. Robert Samuel Langa in the field of biotechnology and medical technology for his creation of tissue engineering and drug delivery system technologies. The 2014 Kyoto Prize in Basic Sciences goes to Dr. Edward Whitton in the field of mathematical sciences, including pure mathematics, for his outstanding contribution to the development of mathematical sciences through the exploration of superstring theory. The 2014 Kyoto Prize in Arts and Philosophy is awarded to Ms. Hukumi Shimula in the field of arts, painting, sculpture, craft, architecture, design, she was recognized as an artist in constant pursuit of the fundamental human value of harmonious coexistence with nature through the artistic creation of Tsumugi Kimono on the basis of folk wisdom. I would like to extend my sincere congratulation to each of the three laureates. The selection process of the Kyoto Prize in each field involves three stages. Candidates nominated by the specialist all over the world are screened initially by the Kyoto Prize Selection Committee and then by the Kyoto Prize Committee. Final selection is carried out by the Kyoto Prize Select Committee. Each committee consists of Japanese scholars and experts of deep insight in specific fields. I observed the committee deliberation as the chairman of the Kyoto Prize Executive Committee and recognized that the wide-ranging careful research and earnest discussion had been given at each committee. I would like to extend my heartfelt respect to all committee members involved in the selection for their long-term efforts and cooperation. Its stringent and impartial screening has been proved by the laureates who truly deserve to be ranked among the greatest intellectual treasures of humankind, significantly contributing to the peace of human society and development of civilization. The Inamori Foundation has the written philosophy of the Kyoto Prize, in which Dr. Kazuo Inamori, founder and the president, expresses reason and wish for establishing the Kyoto Prize. He wishes to celebrate laureates not only for their towering achievement in their fields, but also for their lifelong dedication to extending mastery of their specialties and their admirable characters. All the committee members share and keep this philosophy in mind throughout the selection process. The three laureates named here today have profound humanity and enriched human spirit with their brilliant idea, diligent efforts, and ability to pursue their concepts we feel greatly privileged to have selected the 2014 Kyoto Prize laureates who are embodiment of the philosophy of the Kyoto Prize. It is all the more gratifying to us that we are able to add these three individuals to our list of celebrated laureates and proudly present them to the world. Let me congratulate once again the laureates and their families and take this opportunity to extend our heartfelt gratitude to the many individuals, both in Japan, abroad, 
who have been involved in nominating the candidates or in selecting the 2014 Kyoto Prize laureates. This was Dr. Siketada Nakanishi, Chairman of the Kyoto Prize Executive Committee. Now, presentation of the prizes. First category is Advanced Technology. Kyoto Prize Advanced Technology category had the laureates for this year to Dr. Robert Samuel Langer. Citation is going to be read by the chairman of the Kyoto Prize Committee of this category by Dr. Tasuku Honjo. Now, let me give you citation of the category of advanced technology. This year's prize field is biotechnology and medical technology. From this field, laureate this year is Dr. Robert Samuel Langer. Citation is creation of tissue engineering and drug delivery system technologies. Let me give you the details. Dr. Robert Samuel Langer is a world-renowned pioneer in a field that fuses the disciplines of engineering, medicine, and pharmacology. His accomplishments in basic research alone are outstanding. Additionally, he has also applied these research results to medical care in a breakthrough manner to expedite their practical implementation. Specifically, Dr. Langer is responsible for two major innovations drawn from the principles of chemical engineering and material science. His first innovation lies in creating and establishing the scientific field of tissue engineering. Dr. Langer became the first person to propose the idea of a scaffolding, which now serves as an essential component of regenerative medicine. The central element involves biodegradable materials that are absorbed by tissues as the cells become organized. Dr. Langer constructed the cell scaffold of biodegradable polylactic acid that has been used to successfully grow bone, liver, and muscle tissue in laboratory development. He has also succeeded in engineering human tissue, which prompted research into the development of new therapeutic methods such as the repair of damaged or injured tissues and organs. His second major innovation involves refining drug delivery system technologies for proteins, that is called DDS, and applying these technologies to medical therapies. Dr. Langer developed the world's first stable and long-lasting controlled release technology that keeps proteins physiologically active. This technology has helped to advance DDS research on macromolecules such as proteins and the nucleic acids, opening new applications for regenerative medicine. Numerous medical technologies and pharmaceuticals derived from his research are already widely used to treat patients, including the slow-release chemotherapeutic wafer for the residual brain tumor after surgical removal, the drug eluting stents for angina pectoris, and hormone treatment for prostate cancer. Moreover, he developed controlled release DDS technology, which controls drug release in response to external stimuli, 
such as ultrasound waves or to internal chemical stimuli and biodegradable polymer formulations designed to allow the controlled release of drugs at targeted sites. That is the precision design for the biodegradable polymer formulations. Toward the practical application of these researches, he is currently involved in clinical trials of implantable microchips that release drugs via remote control and targeting nanospheres that contain and deliver anti-cancer drugs, among other concepts. Dr. Langer is a pioneer of the biomedical engineering field, the foundation of regenerative medicine and DDS, having established interdisciplinary techniques for applying technologies to disease treatment and refining them for broader medical use. His research achievements are represented by an enormous number of academic papers, review articles, and patents. He has been active as an entrepreneur and a technical advisor to many biotechnology companies. Every year, many researchers from all over the world come and work in his laboratory and return home with outstanding results. These personnel and academic exchanges are accelerating the advance of biomedical engineering technology on a worldwide basis. For these reasons, the Inamori Foundation is pleased to present the 2014 Kyoto Prize in Advanced Technology to Dr. Robert Samuel Langer. Now, let me introduce to you Dr. Robert Samuel Langer. Next is presentation of Kyoto Prize in Basic Sciences. Kyoto Prize in Basic Sciences is presented to Dr. Edward Whitton. Citation is read by the chair of the Kyoto Prize Committee of this field, Dr. Motoko Kotani. Citation, the 2014 Kyoto Prize in Basic Science has a prize field of 
mathematical sciences, including pure mathematics, and the prize is presented to Dr. Edward Whitten for his outstanding contribution to the development of mathematical sciences through the exploration of superstring theory. A look into the progress of quantum field theory and string theory reveals a spectacular drama featuring a large cast of talented scientists, beginning with the problem reconciling the theory of general relativity with quantum mechanics. They dream of a theory that would unify the entire spectrum of mechanics uh, from the theory of elementary particles to macroscopic cosmology. And uh, during the past 30 years, the role played by Dr. Whitten is really outstanding. In expansion of the first superstring revolution, the great advance in superstring theory started in 1984. Dr. Whitten, a geometric analysis uh, of anomalies in gauge fields and gravity field theory served as an important motivation. And meanwhile, his study of the compactification of strings illuminated a way to the mathematical elucidation of the relations between superstring theory and the standard model of particle physics. In 1995, Dr. Wetton proposed M theory, which united all of the five different 10 dimensional superstring theories into one theory. And this discovery ignited the second superstring revolution in which he played the leading role. Dr. Whitten has made a significant contribution not only to the theoretical physics but also to the pure mathematics. His penetrating physical intuition and advanced mathematical skills have prompted many mathematicians to tackle new research topics. He has inspired new research themes in geometry by the quantum theoretical interpretation of the Morse theory in differential geometry and his use of the Calabi-Yau manifold in the string compactification. He had shed light on the relation between the Chern-Simon gauge theory and the Jones polynominals in the knot theory and provided new perspectives on both. And his other important contribution includes the low energy, uh, the solution to uh, the supersymmetric gauge theory and its application to topography, a cyber written theory. Furthermore, he had provided theoretical evidence of the gauge theory duality. And uh, today, uh, his achievement is highly regard regarded among mathematicians. In the 1970s, uh, the Dr. Freeman Dyson lamented the deep alienation between theoretical physicists and the mathematicians. After 1980, however, it was recognized that a renaissance had begun in the exchange of knowledge between pure mathematics and the theoretical physics. Dr. Whitten has played a remarkable role in sparking this renaissance. For these reasons, the Inamori Foundation is pleased to present the 2014 Kyoto Prize in Basic Sciences to Dr. Edward Witten. Now let us introduce Dr. Edward Witten. contribution in advancing mathematical sciences. Last but not least, 
the arts and philosophy. Kyoto Prize in Arts and Philosophy this year's laureate is Ms. Fukumi Shimura. Citation is read by the chairman of the Kyoto Prize Committee in Arts and Philosophy, Dr. Shuji Takashina, please. Now, let me give you the citation of the category of arts and philosophy. This year's prize field is paint arts, including painting, sculpture, craft, architecture, and design. From this prize field, laureate is Ms. Fukumi Shimura. Now, citation. An artist in constant pursuit of the fundamental human value of harmonious coexistence with nature through the artistic creation of Tsumugi Kimono on the basis of folk wisdom. Ms. Fukumi Shimura started her career as a dyeing and weaving artist after she became inspired by Muneyoshi Yanagi's Mingei movement, the Japanese folk craft movement. Since that time, she has made a profound study of the beauty of tsunugi kimono, which Japanese peasant women traditionally wore for everyday use, and she has developed her own original style, commanding an extraordinary colorful range of metal plant dyed yarns as her rich visual vocabulary and giving free rein to her unique sensibility and creative imagination. She improvises an infinite resonance of colors over canvases of plain weave fabric. Her work has not only broken the stereotypes in Japanese tsumugi kimono, but also developed a radically new sense of beauty in quite a flexible manner. In various parts of the world, the process of making yarn, dyeing with plant-derived colors, weaving, wearing, and passing on memories has been performed without interruption from antiquity. Of all the varieties of fabrics, Ms. Shimura discovered infinite potential in the elegant simplicity of the tsunuki. Sakizome, the Japanese technique of dyeing with various kinds of plants, is the act of receiving colors from nature Ms. Shimura has striven to comprehend the mystery of nature, eventually coming into perfect synchrony with the complicated and delicate life phenomena of plants, and perfecting the skills needed to make them manifest themselves in the form of exquisite colors. That, she implies, means to live in accordance with natural providence. Acknowledging the effect of celestial motions on the color of dyes, she works in harmony with the lunar phases, the cycle of the seasons, and the growth and decay of all living things. She has been always looking at nature. Plants do not yield green dyes. Why is it that the green hue that shows itself when the yarn is pulled up from an indigo jar disappears so quickly? Asking herself this essential question, Ms. Shimura discovered a clue in the words of Johann Wolfgang von Goethe and Rudolf Scheiner. Goethe says that yellow appears next to the light, blue appears next to the darkness, and green appears when these two colors are mixed. Also, according to Steiner, green represents a dead image of life. She encountered these thoughts while extensively exploring color theories around the world, as well as the Japanese tradition of coloring in her quest for this miraculous green plant color. This led her to a conviction that there is a link with the invisible world and the discovery of the secrets of dying. The conviction and the secrets have been reflected in her numerous works. Ms. Shimura, philosophy of Tsumugi, formed through an intimate dialogue with nature, is a delicate and subtle concept which weaves human existence into nature. As such, it offers us suggestions as to the future course of humankind through the beauty of Tsumugi, backed by such deep contemplation. She pursues the fundamental human value of harmonious coexistence with nature. For these reasons, the Inamori Foundation is pleased to present 
the 2014 Kyoto Prize in Arts and Philosophy to Ms. Fukumi Shimura. Now, Ms. Fukumi Shimura. We have received congratulatory messages. First, we would like to introduce the message from Shinzo Abe, Prime Minister of Japan. His message is read by Mr. Yoshihiro Seki, Parliamentary Vice Minister for Economy, Trade and Industry. I wish to offer my best wishes on the occasion of the 2014 Kyoto Prize presentation ceremony being held with the presence of Her Imperial Highness Princess Takamado. I would like to extend a heartfelt congratulation to the laureates of this year, Dr. Robert Samuel Langer. Dr. Edward Whitten, Ms. Fukumi Shimura, and to all of you concerned. Dr. Robert Samuel Langer is a pioneer of the biomedical engineering field. He established the field of tissue engineering and refined DDS technologies for practical applications. He has applied his research results to medical care and accelerated the advance of biomedical engineering technology worldwide. Dr. Edward Whitten is a physicist who has played the leading role in the exploration of the superstring theory, which explains that the fundamental constituent of matters are strings. His contributions are outstanding not only to development of physics, but also to that of mathematical sciences. Ms. Fukumi Shimura has made a profound study of the beauty of tsumugi kimono, which Japanese people traditionally wove for everyday use. She has created tsumugi with excellent and elegant hues by weaving exquisitely colorful plant-dyed yarns and thus developed a new sense of beauty. I deeply respect the laureates because of their challenges over many years. 
for breaking new ground in their respective field of activity. I am sure that the prize presented today will encourage them to continue to play key roles for happiness and progress of the humanity. My administration also goes to the dedication and the passion of Dr. Inamori and all of you concerned for your great efforts to, in order to acknowledge the great achievement of the laureates through presentation of the Kyoto Prize. I strongly wish for the health and success for the laureates and all participants who have gathered here. November 10th, 2014, Prime Minister of Japan, Shinzo Abe. Message is read by Parliamentary Vice Minister for Economy, Trade, Industry, Yoshihiro Seki. Congratulations. This was congratulatory a message by Shinzo Abe, Prime Minister of Japan. Next, congratulatory message from the President of the United States, President Barack Obama. Today, we have the Ambassador, Caroline Rubier Kennedy, Ambassador from the United States to Japan. I send greetings to all those gathered for the 2014 Kyoto Prize presentation ceremony. It is a privilege to join in congratulating this year's winners on their outstanding achievements. For almost three decades, the Kyoto Prize has honored visionaries from across the globe who have made significant contributions to the welfare of humanity. The prize has celebrated those who spurred intellectual curiosity and made breakthroughs that enrich lives around the world, helping build bridges of understanding and friendship in the international community. I'm pleased that two Americans, Dr. Robert Samuel Langer and Dr. Edward Witten, are among this year's recipients. Dr. Langer's work in tissue engineering and drug delivery systems has been essential to the development of regenerative medicine and Dr. Witten's research on superstring theory has provided deep insights into mathematics that have propelled the advancement of theoretical physics. I commend each of this year's laureates, including artist Fukumi Shimura, for her life's work creating textiles of extraordinary beauty. And I congratulate the Inamori Foundation for its continued dedication to recognizing scientific and artistic achievements that brighten our shared future. Barack Obama, November 7th, 2014, Washington, D.C. America has shared that was the message from the President of the United States, President Barack Obama. Next is acceptance speeches by 2014 Kyoto Prize laureates. In the first speech is by Dr. Robert Samuel Langa, laureate in Advanced Technology. <laughs> Prior to his speech, let us introduce Dr. Langa, his profile using the screen.
Dr. Robert Samuel Langer was born in 1948 in the state of New York, USA. He has a younger sister. In his childhood, his parents gave him an erector set and a chemistry set and he enjoyed making things and experimenting and became interested in sciences. This is Dr. Banga with his family. His father was an outgoing person, his mother was calm, and they cared for him and his sister very much. In high school days, he played a lot of sports. He was an excellent athlete and won the gold award for being the best track person. He studied chemical engineering in Kono and graduate school of MIT. He thought that his background in chemistry and engineering would help people through health related researches by applying chemistry and engineering to treatment of diseases and injuries. In 1974, he studied his career as a researcher at Harvard Medical School in order to achieve his dream. He the third from the left in this picture. In those days, engineering and medicine were separate fields, so his researches were not well accepted but he continued to conduct research. He never gave up. And he established a new concept of tissue engineering and advanced regenerative medicine. Cells are grown on biodegradable and absorbable scaffolds and then transplanted in vivo uh, to regenerate bones and organs. This is an example of his innovation drug delivery system for protein and macromolecules. DDS is a technology to deliver right amount of drug to where it's needed, when it's needed. So DDS will reduce dose of medicine administered and thus decrease adverse events and also shorten the treatment period. Today, many students and researchers from all over the world come to work in his lab. He's also active as an entrepreneur and an advisor to biotech companies, hoping to apply researches to practical uses. His advice to young people is to dream big dreams that could change the world and do not give up on those dreams. His family picture when his three children were small. And he says he looks forward to enjoying the beautiful town of Kyoto together with his wife. Now, Dr. Langa, please.
Your Imperial Highness, Dr. Inonomori, Ambassador Kennedy, distinguished guests, and ladies and gentlemen, I feel very privileged and humbled to receive this award today. One of the reasons I feel so privileged is that I'm well aware of the tremendous accomplishments of the previous and current recipients. I wanted to tell you a little bit about why I'm here today. You heard some of it uh, in, the, in that the discussion, but my career hasn't been straightforward. In fact, when I finished my chemical engineering degree at MIT, I didn't know what I wanted to do with my career. It was 1974, and I received many job offers to join oil companies, which is what most chemical engineers did at that time. But I had a dream of using my background to improve people's health, and I was lucky that I ended up doing postdoctoral research with Dr. Judah Folkman at Harvard Medical School. This job had a profound impact on my life. One project that I began working on involved polymer drug systems, plastics, that might be able to slowly release molecules to study cancer. Many of these molecules were large, and no one had been able to develop ways to release them in a slow, steady manner, so it wasn't possible to really study them. In fact, the scientific literature at that time said it wasn't possible to do this. I've often said that the only thing that I had going for me was that I hadn't read that literature. So, so I spent several years in the laboratory trying to find a way to continuously release these molecules from plastics. In fact, I managed to find over 200 different ways to get this to not work. But finally, I made a discovery that did enable certain types of plastics to release these substances for many months, if needed. This finding, however, was initially greeted with great skepticism by the scientific community, which was very disappointing to me. Furthermore, when I tried to receive funding to support my research, and I wrote research grants, my first nine grants were turned down, were rejected. In addition, the year after I got my first faculty job, the chairman of the department who had hired me left. And so a number of the senior faculty in that department decided to give me advice. Their advice was that I should start looking for another job. <laughs> so there I was, getting my grants turned down, people not believing in my research, and having little hope of even keeping my uh, lowly assistant professor job. But I was fortunate, however, that within several years, scientists in the pharmaceutical and med medical industries started using some of the principles and some of the inventions I'd made, and slowly things began to turn around, and eventually I even got promoted. Today, there are over 300 companies, at least, that are using our discoveries and our patents, uh, and over 100 different products have been made uh, from these that I hope are improving, and in some cases, even saving people's lives. I'm very honored to be here tonight, this afternoon, to be recognized for this research. It would never have happened without having a ter terrific staff and research group, both today and in the past, a number of whom are from Japan, and also I wouldn't be here without the loving support of my wife, Laura. I feel that I'm an incredibly lucky person to have su such a terrific life and family and such wonderful friends and colleagues, some who, of whom are here today. And I want to thank you all very, very much. It's a tremendous privilege for me to receive this magnificent award. Dr. Robert Samuel Langer gave us his acceptance speech. Next is the basic science category, laureate Dr. Edward Whitten.
Prior to receiving his acceptance speech, let us introduce to you the profile of Dr. Witten. Dr. Edward Whitten was born in 1951 in Maryland in the United States. He was the eldest son, having one younger sister and two younger brothers. When his childhood, space race was having a prime time. Partly because of that, he wanted to become an astronomer. These are parents of Dr. Witten. His father was a physicist. He taught Dr. Witten earnestly the math. His mother was very good at playing the piano. Beautiful music was performed at home. This is Dr. Witten at a senior high school. He was interested in politics. Once he wanted to become a journalist, but he sensed that he has the talent for mathematics and science. At the Princeton University in graduate school, he majored applied mathematics. After that, he changed his major to physics to get the doctorate degree. In 1980s, there was a big debate and discussion for the superstring theory. Superstring theory, in a simple word, means the theory that the smallest element of particle is not hot, but very small string. This theory has the imperfect portion. However, Dr. Whitcomb was strongly attracted and to do further research on it. And more and more researchers accumulated their researches, and several kinds of superstring theory were presented. A Dr. Whitcomb presented the more comprehensive M theory. This M theory stimulated the researchers and led them to the research in the new dimension. In 1990, in mathematics, the most authority, the highest degree of the mathematical award of the Fields Award was given to Dr. Whitten. Second from the left is Dr. Whitten. He was the first physicist to receive Fields Award. Dr. Whitten saw through the mathematical structure behind the physical phenomena. He developed the physics, but also contributed greatly to the mathematics. Triggered by Dr. Whitten's work, greater exchanges has become popular between physicists and mathematicians. Dr. Whitten is highly evaluated in the world because he made a renaissance in the exchanges of the pure mathematics and theoretical physics. Even today, at the Advanced Research Institute at Princeton, Dr. Whitten is doing the research for superstring with open mind and a bold approach. Dr. Whitten's message to young people, take opportunities of learning, and in accordance to your own passion, please challenge the unknown world. This is the picture of Dr. Whitten and the three of his children and their families. Lower right is Mrs. Whitten, but she is also the doctor physicist. This is Dr. Whitten's fourth visit to Kyoto since 1990. 
Kyoto has lots of memories and he said that he wants to enjoy his stay with his wife. Now, Dr. Witten, please. Your Imperial Highness, Dr. Inamori, Ambassador Kennedy, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor to be selected for the Kyoto Prize in Basic Sciences. I'd like to th express my thanks and appreciation to the Inamori Foundation for honoring me and recognizing my work in this way. And I want to take this occasion to offer my thanks to all those who have helped me along the way. To begin with, I thank the teachers, particularly my professors in graduate school, and the many colleagues from whom I've learned over the years. And especially, I must thank my family, starting with my parents, who encouraged my interest in science when I was young, and my wife and colleague, Chiara, who's provided so much support and encouragement, and with special mention of my siblings, and nowadays our children and their families. It's marvelous to have the opportunity to work in science and mathematics. I consider myself very lucky to have had this opportunity. For one who has the passion for these subjects, being able to work in them is the best fortune that one can imagine. And the opportunities are still there for today's students. When I talk to students, I'd like to say that the continents have been explored, but in science and mathematics, there are still wide open horizons for discoveries. I've had the luck to work in an area of physics and mathematics that has been very fertile throughout my career. Certainly, there was much luck involved. Since when I was young, I had only a hazy idea about the choices I was making. No matter how hard we work and how clever we are, what we are able to achieve depends heavily on the context created by our colleagues, past and present, all the way back to the beginning of the modern scientific enterprise. The discoveries of our predecessors and sometimes of our contemporaries are the starting point for what we do today. Often it is our colleagues who define the questions we work on or who discover some of the clues that enable us to make progress. I think of the Kyoto Prize as a great honor for me and also as a recognition of the scope and vitality of the field that I've worked in. For the recognition to both for me and for the field, I am very grateful and I would like to thank the Inamori Foundation as well as all of you who are participating in this event today. Thank you. This was a speech by Dr. Edward Whitton. Last but not least, the laureate of the Kyoto Prize in Arts and Philosophy, Ms. Hukumi Shimura. Let us introduce you, Ms. Shimura. Ms. Hukumi Shimura was born in 1934 in Oumihachiman, Shiga Prefecture. At the age of two, she was adopted by her father's brother, and she moved to Tokyo with her step-parents. She was a girl who loved fairy tales. She dreamed of creating beautiful stories. Her father worked for a major shipping company. Her mother was gentle. They cared for her very much. In her late teens, she was reunited with her biological parents and siblings. Inspired by her birth mother's strong interest in weaving, 
She was fascinated by the world of textiles. In 1955, she was inspired by the Minge movement of Mune Yoshi Yanagi and began to dedicate herself uh, in weaving. Her mother had known and respected Yanagi, and uh, he was a philosopher who discovered beauty in articles for daily use of the common people. Soon, her first submission, the work of Obi Sashibot, was accepted at the Japan Traditional Art Exhibition. And the next year, her first work of Tsumugi Kimono, Akigasumi, Autumn Mist, received the Encouragement Award. This was because her Tsumugi created original textile by Delicately weaving dyed yarns into simple features of traditional tsunuki. The color is essential element of her work. When chemical dyes were widely used, she used only natural plant-derived dyes. After trials and errors, she succeeded in weaving her original tsumugi, woven with exquisitely colorful yarns like nature itself. The color dyed by a plant is not simply the color of the plant, but the life of the plant itself represented by its hue. This is what she was thinking. This is her conviction. She gained through her study of the theory of color by Goethe and Steiner and Japanese classical aesthetics. She has demonstrated the philosophy of Tsumugi by which the artist creates through deep understanding and the true acceptance of nature. Since 1968, she has created her work in a studio in Sagano, Kyoto. And last year, she established Arusu Shimura, a dyeing and weaving school in Okazaki, Kyoto. She hopes to transmit to younger artists not only artistic spirit and skills, but also her sense of respect and gratitude to nature. Her message to young people is, please be aware that you receive benefit from everything in the world other than yourself. A grain of rice, a drop of water is a gift from a power not of your own. Your happiness in life lies in harshness and scarcity. She lives in Kyoto, and Ms. Shimura says Kyoto is very precious for her as Japan's nature and tradition live in harmony here. Now, Ms. Shimura, please. You, Imperial Highness Takamado, thank you very much for being with us, and President Inamori, and distinguished guests, and ladies and gentlemen. I am very much honored to be able to receive the such a renowned award today. On the worldwide basis, 
The two other lawlets are outstanding scholars, but why am I here? On the same stage, I am totally confused that I don't know why. However, kindly, Kyoto Prize was given to me, and I think that this gives me the duty to reassure the mission is given to me in my life. When I first started my own work, there were no actually individual persons of doing this natural plant dyeing and weaving. Usually poor peasants' wives conducted the weaving or local enterprises had the weaving. So there was no artistic independent weavers at all. Those were the years when I started my work. I was quite inspired by the Soets Yanagi's Minge movement. When I started my art activities, I determined to express my own inner world by getting the colors from natural plant dye, spinning the yarn through the silkworm cocoon, and weaving by hands, and uh, that was my principle. And uh, because of this, I was guided to this work deeper to the principle. Well, I didn't know anything because I studied as a layperson. However, I repeated the natural plant dying, and then some invisible thing is always coming to me. I got enchanted with the beauty of some rules some laws must be in existence in space. Maybe something is represented here in the unmeasurable ways. What is color? Is the color is just a color? All the plants' lives are here, but the color of those plants cannot be produced as hues. For example, the green colors of the green leaves cannot ever be produced after dying. What is it? Why is that? So I explored the solution or the answers for more than 10 years, and I studied in the Japanese history of dying, but I couldn't find any answer. One day, I encountered the words by gather. Color is a result of action of light. That is ordeal. That's what Gether said. I was astonished and shocked, as if the scales dropped from my eyes. That was my own awakening. Yes, I was pursuing light, not color. That was light. So what I was wondering what it is, is the light, that light is coming from the universe to our globe. And if there were sufferings, or deals, or happiness, or many other events, and then that ends up with colors, and that is presented to human beings. Towards those colors, I was astonished with the generosity of nature or the plants. Infinite variety of colors were given for free to people. I had a sense of all. Oh, plants are probably living at a higher level. They are kindly watching us. And for the threads also, we receive yarn from the silkworms' cocoons which is also having lives. We are just taking their lives, and we are just destroying the nature. And in these modern worlds, I got some important instruction from nature. After March the 11th, after the great earthquake, pollution was a serious matter, and uh, that risk was given to also the vegetation. And if that happened, and that will be the enormous crisis, but human beings in nowadays are not still noticing it. We are just pursuing for pleasure. However, now we should have the sense of crisis for this earth. In a generation of younger people, daughters or the grandchildren, for those young generations, I found that the many youngsters have the same shared feeling. Therefore, I didn't think it could be possible to realize opening the schools. However, I was urged from inwards to do something, and I wanted to convey what I have found to more of the younger people in the future. 
how Japanese colors or hues are wonderful. We have a lots of the historical compilation of the Japanese poems or the tales or stories of the classic novels, tales of Genji or Makurano Sosi. Japan is a such a small, tiny island country. However, we have identified the subtle difference of the many kinds of colors and the beauty of colors were enjoyed through the history of Japanese culture. I want to convey that message to younger people. Now, modern society is the suffocating society in a rational way to some of the people. And then some revival could be given through this work, touching with the plants. And we should have awareness and the plants and nature are generously watching us. That's what I want to convey. Not the education. No, that's too much for me. I was given my life, and I did work throughout my life. Through dying and weaving, I would like to convey what I found important to future generations. I think the Kyoto Prize was given to remind the mission given to me in my own life. I do hope that the younger people will convey my message to the future generation. Thank you very much indeed for today. That was the acceptance speech from Ms. Kukumi Shimura. Commemorating the 30th year, the Kyoto Prize is now presented to individuals for their outstanding achievement in their fields. I'm sure that the, the laureate's achievement will further advance and give greater benefits to our dear children who are going to lead the society in the future. Expressing their sense of gratitude to the achievement by the laureate, now children of Kyoto are going to offer songs.
excuse if the view of children has conveyed this message since the first ceremony in 1985. And it is a plea to pass on the blue earth. Children are going to present traditional Japanese handballs.
Tell Her Imperial Highness Princess Takamado to leave the hall. Please rise. Please be seated. Thank you very much for joining this celebration of the Lord. On behalf of the organizer Inamori Foundation, I would like to express our heartfelt thanks. The Kyoto Prize is an international prize to acknowledge outstanding persons for their contribution to advancement of science, civilization, and spiritual deepening of the humanity. Commemorating the 30th year, all of us concerned with the Kyoto Prize pledge that this international prize will continue to make contribution for the people in the world. We would like to ask for your continuous support. Now let us invite families of the laureates onto the stage, please. And the laudates of the previous years are here to join the celebration. Mr. Tadao Ando, laudate in 2002, Mr. Issei Miyake, laudate in 2006, and the Dr. Shinya Yamanaka, laudate in 2010. Please come on to the stage. The Lordies are going to leave the stage. And also, please enjoy exchanges. Before you leave the 
stage. It's wonderful if you can exchange some felicitations among yourselves. And please give a big applause to the laureate. With this, we would like to conclude the 2014 Kyoto Prize presentation ceremony. And thank you very much.